<laughs> hey everybody you know wisdom wisdom we're coming to the end of our of our wisdom month yeah yeah we'll be moving on to another parami uh, next week and um yeah wisdom it's one of the big ones you know and one of the and not the one of the ones that are not not so clear not so clear as susan was discussing on, on monday a lot of nuances with wisdom and a lot of misunderstanding as there are in in in, in buddhism as well what it was what does it mean in wisdom i mean don't we all have those associations uh, to which i well speaking for myself it was some wise old wise old person you know wizened face uh speaking uh, speaking so, something esoteric <clears throat> there's a sense that this person understands something about the nature of life and will communicate it in very um very kind of cryptic cryptic phrases <clears throat> you know I remember that uh, you know some of those old old TV shows when when I was a kid uh, you know about wisdom. This is a wise person. What is a wise person? What is a wise person in Buddhism? In Buddhism, it's so concrete. I'm always struck by how concrete the teachings uh, uh, that the Buddha offered are, and 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 the teachings around wisdom, because they're not in this case just cognitive understanding of the way things are it's not at all that's not it at all cognitive understanding it's not wisdom until it's implied some change in action and wisdom is always involved with wise attention wise attention is there's a lot of time spent on that in buddhism what is wise attention and again, wise attention is not figuring out in a macro theoretical uh, framework the understanding of how things work. Yeah, the, the larger truths of, of, of the universe. No, wisdom and wise attention, yonisa manasakara is the phrase, wise attention. It's paying careful attention to cause and effect relationships between things. And in particular, bringing discernment care and discernment uh and emotional discernment and really looking carefully to see what is wholesome and what isn't what leads to suffering and to more distress and what things lead to less distress less distress and more ease of well-being and we think, no, it's got wisdom's more than that. And it's not. In Buddhism, it's not. The whole path is about recognizing what, what suffering is and how we co-create it unwittingly in our own experience and how we can begin to transform that suffering into less and less suffering by the way that we respond to it, by the way that we act, by the way that we that we feel into it, look into it, and respond after seeing and looking into it, right? That is what wise attention is. It's always about moving into to let more, more well-being. Sometimes, somehow we think wisdom is more than that. That's a nice thing, but what's real wisdom, you know? And in Buddhism, it's clear. It's different than wisdom in, in, our, in the philosophical traditions of the West. <laughs> what, what my, there are a lot of definitions of wisdom that are not, they're not capture the Buddhist sensibility, which is wisdom is looking clearly and through looking clearly and with discernment, beginning to make some changes so that we're suffering less. Yeah, that's considered wise attention. That's considered moving, transforming the unwholesome, transforming the afflictive emotions uh, into into more into more wholesome ways of being. Yeah, so that we're we're suffering less. And that sounds simple, but it isn't, as we all know. Otherwise, we'd be happy all the time. Starting right now. 
you know? Yeah. Why do we keep, keep step? What are the potholes that we keep stepping in? Yeah, that, that's where the wise attention is. What's going on? You know, what is creating this mood right now? How am I participating in, in creating this mood right now? How does obsessive thought? What, how, how does obsessive thought serve serve me? Does it? Well, let me look more closely into it. You know. Let me look more closely into what I have been up to my whole life and see what, what really, not because somebody else says so, yeah, what really uh, mo is moving toward ease of well-being and what really is not. Based on my direct phenomenological experience, you know, and this is what the Buddha did. He said, this, this, Oh, this is what works. This this doesn't work. You know, I thought this was the way. No, this doesn't feel good. It was being guided, guided by by what was what was moving him in a more wholesome direction, which is finally why he finally accepted the the rice and milk that was offered to him by by the riverbank when he was practically ready to die because of his asceticism and only eating one grain of rice a day. He thought asceticism is the way to wisdom. And he realized asceticism is not the way to wisdom. It did not reduce suffering. And that's how he found, the, you know, the middle path. You know, of not too much indulgence and not too much asceticism. You know? you know, not too much beating ourselves up with a stick as a way to happiness that doesn't work so well. Judging ourselves doesn't lead to ease of well-being. No? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. There are really some very simple, simple truths that come that come out of this teaching, but the direction, the direction of wisdom is so to, to be willing to look more carefully with wise attention, with discernment. To, to, to what's going on in here and to what honestly is moving us in a direction of ease of well-being and what honestly is not and beginning to make course corrections based on that. Yeah, yeah. it sounds so simple. It, it sounds so simple. I love this quote, um, wisdom is derived from the experienced defect of all of its enticing alternatives. Also, this is a this is a that's just so a funny is a Western quote. Wisdom is derived from the experienced defect of all of its enticing alternatives. You know, and also we kind of back into discernment by by seeing by seeing by trying all these other ways to become to become wise that don't work. Greed doesn't work. Having more having more doesn't lead to happiness. Having much more. Still doesn't lead to doesn't lead to the kind of deep contentment that we're looking for. Greed doesn't work. Blame doesn't work. Blaming myself doesn't work. You know? Yeah. Trying to control the whole universe doesn't work. Trying to live forever doesn't work. You know, we end up backing into <laughs> backing into wise attention sometimes, you know, by trying this, by trying that, by being impulsive in this way, trying this, trying this, trying that. And then in this practice, it's like looking more carefully, what really is works? What really are the baby steps we need to be taking here? Not the grand sweeping gestures. The momentary, the momentary steps that we can begin to take based on wise discernment, based on, on wise attention. Hey, what's going on in here, buddy? You know, you've heard me say this. How's it going on here today, buddy? What are you up to today? You know, what are we doing? You know, what steps do we want to take? How do I want to come back to the breath when it, when the mind gets wandered? Do I yank it back? Is that helpful? Yeah, yeah. What role does kindness play? 
in this whole in the whole in this whole drama of life yeah what, what is wise attention yeah why is attention why is attention yeah and it's really Susan said the other day, wisdom is not a thing. It's a, it's the fruit, it's the fruit of, of discernment over time. And it happens gradually. We all have wise moments. We just don't tend to stay wise all the time. You know, we slip in and out of it, just like with everything else. It doesn't stay. We know what it was. There, we all have moments. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this makes sense. Oh yeah. I'm going to take this forward, and I do take it forward until I turn on the news, and then all of a sudden I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not in wise attention anymore. I'm all caught up and spun out and stressed out. Oh, how did that happen? You know, but it's moments. It's the moments of wise attention that we can bring, the moments of discernment, gradually, moment after moment. You know, as many times as we can bring that kind of discernment to our own experience. And Buddha is really clear about that. That, that, that. that wisdom will come not from believing other teachers, even him, but by checking out in your own experience what leads to the wholesome and what doesn't. Yeah? And the wise person in Buddhism is not the one who thinks about things better, but who is living a life that's a that's that's more more wholesome where there's less suffering and more ease of well-being you know based on that close examination of, of of his or her experience right of their experience yeah yeah so it really comes back to the path wisdom comes right back to the path and right right back to some of the most basic elements of the path you know which just take a close look. Take a close look. Even at those things that aren't, don't, we have, we have to look more closely at what, what we're doing, how we're making choices, and how this, how, how we've been reinforcing certain things that are not so helpful to reinforce anymore. What are they for you? We all have those things. We've been holding on to burning logs, you know, like, 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 ah, what am I doing? Why have I been, why have I, why have I been having, holding on like this? You know, what, wow, how's that working? How's that working? It really is simple like that. It's always so much more simple and we're always so complex, you know? But it really comes down to what have I been holding on to that is no longer so useful to be holding on to? And what can I can begin to let go of a little, little at a time? How can I invite harmony into the way I'm, I'm moving through uh, my meditation practice in my life? You know, that's called, that's called moving in the direction of wisdom. Yeah, and, and, yeah, yeah.